Hello everybody, welcome to the World Championship 24 official group stage preview. Um, let's open up with the rewards there, look at that, that is the incredible rewards, 8,000 euros for the final eight, 2,500 for the winner, incredible, second 1,800, third 1,300, fourth 800, fifth to eight 400, very nice, there's also like a logo for the winner which is very cool isn't it? Titles for the champions and challenges and contenders. Really nice stuff. There you go. Um, I met, I prepared this. It's not great because for some reason um, it missed off the one chaos team and the two old world alliance teams. But there you go. This is a little pie chart showing you what races were taken. As you can see, the most popular were Shambling Undead, closely followed by Orcs and Lizardmen. Decent amount of Dark Elves, uh, Wood Elves, sorry, and then Dark Elves, Skaven, Necro, and Imperial Nobility, strangely. And then uh, you know, a few people just taking the odd thing. I guess because, you know, they were specialists or liked them or whatever. So the group stage has been drawn. Here we go. We've got full 16 teams here. Really nice. Uh, 16 teams, 16 groups for 64 players. And we can go up the team's list of each group and see them all, all in the game, ready to start their games, and uh, it will definitely load. Right, so here we go, Group A, um, to kick us off, you can see the team names there, the player names, obviously, let's start with KFOG, right, he's the big name, we'll try and start with a favourite each time. Uh, yeah, KFOG, absolutely legend, everybody knows him, and he's taken Wood Elves, uh, with 9 dodge total, he, he nearly went with 11 as well, he said, but this is his favourite Wood Elf build, 3 rerolls, Apothecary, um, this amount of gold lets him start with all 4 catchers, 2 dancers of course, and then this amount of skills lets him start with, yeah, you know, maybe 11 dodge, but he's got 9 dodge, a couple of wrestles, helps him with the LOS blocks, and of course, you know, sacking the ball sometimes. And yeah, sidestep, he's, he's gone with a sidestep strip, you know. Tackle strip was the standard in tabletop for a long time. But now, uh, you know, I, I guess a combination of things, right, is the, the, the catchers losing sprint means they're not the, num they're not the number one go-to for one-turning anymore, right? Like a sidestep catcher was something you might take occasionally. Whereas now you might as well just take sidestep on the dancer because the dancer's great. And then um, you know he can he can sidestep in game, you know in, in general play, but also you can use him for the one turn with sidestep. So really good, really, and he also defends against the one turn a little bit, especially with a tree. So yeah, interesting development for Woody's there. So yeah, K Fog, absolute legend, one of the best players in the world, will surely be one of the favourites to win the whole tournament. Uh, interesting group he's got for himself with Necro. Here, Blue Max, uh, PlayStation coach, I believe, so I don't really know him. He has gone for a very atypical necromantic skill selection. The team is standard, three re-rolls, um, all well, not all positionals. They, they only get seven positionals because they can't afford the second ghoul. So that is a bit of a nerf from, you know, the Euro Bowl that we were used to in Super League. But you're still fine. It's a bit, little bit brittle, right? If they lose this ghoul, they're in a lot of trouble. Um, he's interestingly not gone for the four guard. He's gone for block fleshies and tackle wraiths. Um, I mean, and then the, the three block you'd expect. I mean, I think the guards are better, but uh, you know, it'll still be interesting, right? Interesting necro build there, particularly against Kfog, right? Having the tackle and stuff. Lepeg with undead. He's gone guard mummies. Um, Controversial one, Dimmy G hates these. He he take block on the two ghouls instead. But we've gone for two guard mummies. That's going to help him versus the orcs, right? In the bash matchups, the guard on the mummies is better. Um, tackle white, good job he's got tackle against K Fog. Extra guard, a block and a wrestle. So yeah, a lot of people will not take skills in the mummy and go block both ghouls. Full team, 13 players, 3 rerolls, totally standard roster build. Yeah, the tackle will be handy um, for Blue Max indeed. Now I've got Jatsik with Orcs. Uh, so this is, he's gone for an interesting build here. He's gone for the Troll, 12 players and an Apple. So very durable. Only 2 rerolls, but he's taking Leader on the thrower to mitigate that somewhat. So he's... he's but the problem is, of course, that's cost him a skill 
in the building so he doesn't have a mighty blow blitzer most people go mighty blow blitzer tackle blitzer four guards um so it's it's costing the mighty blow but he's got the leader so he's still got three reels so now he's kind of got he's got his cake and eating it too you know he's got a mighty blow blitzer with the troll strength five he's got max strength and he's got loads of guards so there you go um interesting build interesting build and uh you know, I mean, I, I'm fancying Kfog to qualify here, um, but who joins him? Up for debate. I'll just try and do the, the favourite right for each group. That's what I'll try to do. I'm going to try to get through them quick as well, because there's a lot of teams. <laughs> it's, going to take, it's going to take a while. Right, Group B, we've got Undead, Nobility, Lizards, Nobility. Um, Again, a lot. So uh, nobody should take any offence here when I'm when I'm picking out my favourite because obviously a lot of the guys I haven't heard of, right? They've qualified through private leagues and uh, they've also qualified through PlayStation. So a lot of the people I won't know for that reason. Um, Arzawain is the name that jumps out at me as the you know somebody I know is good here. Um, he has, however, taken Imperial Nobility, which as we all know are terrible, but they've got a good package. So he's got a guard thrower for the extra AV. Four guard bodyguards, guard ogre, leader thrower. So actually quite nice skill selections. I would have actually gone double dodge for the blitzers, but um, this is uh, pretty much actually my preferred roster, right? Max guard, he's gone six guards and a leader. So it's, it's a, probably the best build you can get, I would say. 13 players, no apple, um, and yeah, two reels plus leader. So this is actually a, quite a good this is quite a good Imperial Nobility, Imperial Nobility build, and uh, I know Arzawain's a good player, so he's probably favourite for this group. Looking at the others, we've got Frankie. Oh, it's Sons of Frank Instein, because he's Frankie. Very good. Uh, this is somewhat similar to the other one. I mean, I guess all the Undead builds are going to be the same, right? 13 players, 3 rerolls, etc. Um, but he's dropped a guard on the white for a block ghoul. Again, mostly people drop the skills on the mummies ordinarily, um, but he's gone for that. A Viking cop with lizard men has taken the six block, lovely. Um, two rerolls, Apple is standard, and then you think that then your flex is you can have three rerolls, or you can have the twelfth player, and the twelfth player can be a normal skink or a chameleon skink. I think a chameleon skink is okay. It does help you with a one turn and a two turn. Um, but honestly, maybe the normal skink is better. So yeah, completely normal build here from Viking Cop, um, and lizards are really strong. I'd have expected, honestly, I would have expected like 90% of people I think should have taken lizard men. I think lizards are an awesome, awesome team for this format. Um, Ratamo here with nobility again. I don't, I instantly don't like this as much as the other build. In fact. Oh, it's it's. Where where has his team value gone? He has uh, he's taken the third reroll in the apple. He doesn't have the tro uh, the ogre. Oh dear, does no ogre, and he's got double is on a mighty blow, blitzer, tackle blitzer, four guards, sure hands, and two dirty players. Okay, so we're going for the high roll with dirty player. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't like the lack of blodge. I don't like the relative lack of guard. I much prefer Arzawain's build um, as far as nobility go. Um, but you know, Viking Cop has got lizard men, so I, you know, he's a strong, strong argument for lizards uh, going through there as well. Um, okay. Right, let's have a look at Group C. Oh dear. I was a little bit unhappy with this group, to be honest, because I've heard of all of these coaches before. So. I don't imagine any of them are going to be particularly weak, whereas, you know, if somebody's qualified and you haven't heard of them, you can hope that they're not very good, can't you? But, um, <laughs> you know, there were several community leagues and the, you know, it's, um, the quality could be variable, shall we say. Whereas if people are qualified through like the world, the, the uh, Champions Ladder and stuff, you'd imagine that they're going to be of a certain level of quality. So there was a, there's a hope that some people, you know, and they could have taken really bad races, and like, for example, someone's taken Chaos Chosen. Would love to have been in that group. But um, let's have a look. So the favourite is obviously Jimmy Fantastic, right? Um, <laughs> I would hope that I was the favourite. The problem is I've done pretty badly with Dark Elves. Um, 
This this build is the one. Actually, this is what Mankiz took to Euro Bowl. He was the Euro Bowl MVP. He won five, drew one, lost none with this team at Euro Bowl. Um, it's very solid. The reason I took it is because these games maybe go to overtime. I thought 12 players and two rerolls is a bit more durable, solid, let's grind out the wins there. Yes, funnily enough, I did qualify through for my own private league. However, my league was the Super League, which had nine qualifiers to the World Cup in it. So, um, you know, <laughs> to be fair, it wasn't an easy one to win. Uh, but, uh, you know, I did win with Orcs and I've chosen Black, uh, Dark Elves for this and it's... I haven't had great results with Dark Elf, so hopefully I'll I'll overcome that adversity of of you know using it. like a lot of people, particularly table toppers, right, have like a team that they're the best with, right? Like Kfog, you 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 know you um, you associate with Wood Elves, Olivier Delac, you associate with Skaven, Andy Davo, Necromantic, um, Purple Chest Dwarves, you know, like things like that. And I don't have that. I don't have one team that's mine, you know. Um, like Yudlagar with goblins, right? I don't, I don't have one team that's mine. Um, I'm gonna try and cultivate that with dark elves in future. But yeah, I'm start, I'm jumping in at the deep end, using them at the World Cup. But you know, blood ball still blood ball, right? So hopefully I can do well. Uh, Kelathorn here has old world alliance. Very interesting. He's gone for the ogre, not the tree, and put block on him. Three guards on the strength access guys. No skill on the Troll Slayer. Tackle on the Blitzer, block on the Catcher. And, uh, oh, Wrestle. These are Wrestle, not Dirty Players. Okay, good. A sneaky Git Halfling. <laughs> 13 players. You can be my uh, wingman oh, oh, wow. Miss Pearl Tree. Um, I've just realized I should have been in the casting channel so that if Tree wants to join, she can. Let me go in there just in case um, but thank you for the raid glorious and uh, yeah I'm really trying to power through these as quick as possible because there's so many teams <laughs> so it, it, you know it might be okay if you if you can't make it uh, Andy's away for the weekend I think at least the day so but hopefully on um, when we do the we'll do the 30 the round of 32 knockouts right and then hopefully we'll get all three of us on for that um, but yeah this is this has to be kept moving very quickly all right, Tumish here. Um, there is a website that lists all of the, yes. Um, well, there's a, there's a Google Sheets. I'm sure somebody can link Breaky Tees and mine. Um, all right, cheers, Tree, good luck. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's Breaky Tees and mine. I, I've done one for the casts, and uh, Breaky Tees done one for the whole, the whole thing. So Breaky Tee has all the information, how everyone qualified, everything. Absolutely amazing document from him. Um, Right, Tumish has only got three guard biggins. Guard Blitzer, Tackle Blitzer, No Mighty Blow, I like that. Again, we've gone for another leader thrower. Interesting, I wonder if this is new new tech that no one told me about. So he's gone 12 players, Apo, two reels. Like, this is quite good for overtime, right? 12 players and an Apo and a Troll. It's very, very tough team. Uh, the, the problem is the thrower, right? If your thrower gets removed, he hasn't got block or anything. You're kind of relying on his leader for your third reroll, um, but you've got yeah a lot more reliable with twelve players plus Apo and one being a troll, so a tough team there for sure with two mish, and then Truk with undead. We've got three guard, no tackle on the other white, a block and a wrestle. Only three ghouls. Oh wow. Okay, so he's gone for the dirty player skeleton. So very interesting. Most people went with thirteen players. And uh, yeah, Truk has gone for 14, only three ghouls. So I, not not my kind of build, I'll be honest. Um, but you know, the dirty player could high roll, couldn't it? So so yeah, I guess I'm worried about is. <laughs> Funnily enough, with all these teams, I'm facing a sneaky get halfling and a dirty player skeleton. So two of the two of the high rolly things there, which is you know could could spell disaster. But of course, I still I still have to pick myself, right? I have to pick myself. Um, hopefully I'll get some practice games off stream. I just haven't been able to focus at all there. Playing on stream and stuff. Uh, the, the NAF ladder games, I have not been at my best. So hopefully I can I can change that for the uh, actual tournament. Uh, now I've got Group D. Undead, Skaven, Humans, Lizards. 
The names that jump out at me are Ceramol and Gavias. Let's go with Ceramol. He scored an amazing reverse one turn in Rebel one time. Uh, he will forever be famous for that. He's gone for the standard build, 13 players, 4 ghouls, etc. A couple of guard mummies. Again, lots of guard mummies in this. I guess they're anticipating lizards and orcs and having to fight them with guard. Um, Tackle White. Sure Hands Ghoul is interesting. I guess that covers the Wood Elf matchup a little bit. And a block and a wrestle, three rerolls. So yeah, not not the preferred Dimmy Bill. Like Dimmy likes all you know, Blodge and Rodge on all of his ghouls, and I think I think that's probably best for this kind of format. Um, you know, then yeah, guard white and a tackle white. But we've gone for guard big guys, which is fair enough, right? It's fair enough. Is it, it's hard when you're building a team that's got to take on like the elves and the bash, right? You've got very limited resources. Oh dear. We've only got four block here for Gabias. Only four block. Um, I think that's a mistake, definite mistake. I definitely prefer six block as the only build I would ever consider. But you know, guard Crocs is okay. The problem is, you know, you're leaving Saurus. If, if you take anything but block on a Saurus, you've got weak Saurus now that can get 75% knockdown. And if you lose Saurus, you're in a very bad place. Um, he's got the sneaky git skink for the high roll. And he's taken the Chameleon Skink instead of the third reroll, which is completely reasonable. Um. <laughs> Don't troll Yud. <laughs> right. Slade Black Mage here has gone for five guard humans. We've got a leader and a block. Wow, a leader plus four rerolls. Okay, so 13 players. So the roster is the pretty much the standard human roster, I would say. You know, you've got the one turn chance. You've got 13 players, which is, you know, one of them. You've got 12 and a half, right? Because the halfling isn't very good. The apple, the four reels are great. I would not have expected the leader. I would have expected just like a block, right? So you've got consistency. Um, oh, man. Honestly, leader croxes were incredible, Chigand. Leader croxes were incredible um, back in the olden days when they were allowed. <laughs> but they are no longer allowed. And also, not, not for NAF format, right? Okay, and we might have to stop responding to the trolls. Let's <laughs> let's move on. Zerples with Skaven, Juggernaut Roger, Guard Blitzer, like that. Oh, Sprint run Sidestep. I much prefer Sidestep because you get use of it in the other 15 turns of the game, right? Sidestep is very effective. In fact, arguably more effective than Sprint at getting the push, getting the one turn score because you can push back into him with the an alt right ogre depending on the setups and then you can use the sidestep to get forward so um i would argue sidestep is superior to sprint for the one turn anyway and then for the other 15 turns of course sidestep is better than sprint uh, wrestle strip block so you know a few skills in the gutters leader thrower Th only 12 players with an apple and three rerolls. so you know there's a lot of options with skaven whether to go like 13 no apple or whether to go two rerolls and thirteen players and stuff like that. There's a few. There's a bit of wiggle room on how you build your rats. But um, yeah, I'm fancying Ceramol to to take this group. To be honest. Right, group E. We have oh the group of death. Funnily enough, just after trees raided, this is the group of death. Pretty pretty rough. I mean, my favourite is going to be Strider. So let's let's jump in and look at Strider. He's gone Woodies with a tree, um, a strip, and a sidestep dancer. Lead a thrower to get the third, um, and dodge lineman and wrestle lineman. So this is similar to Core's build, um, somewhat similar. Like. <laughs> This is maybe the more standard build, I guess, right? Because the leader gets you the third reroll. You really want three rerolls. You also, most people like a tro like a tree man. Um, now, what's interesting is, of course, Cole with not going for the tree man makes him much better for the mirror matches. But this tree is going to help versus like you know the field, right? Versus undead and orcs and lizards. The tree's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, he's given up a couple of dodges. Uh, well. Three dodges actually on on Cause build, and you know I I think I back Cause build more, but you know Stride is a great player, defending champion essentially. If you count the season two finals as being the same tournament, 
and this is certainly a, an absolutely typical build and very strong, you know, great player. And then we've got Pybot. Uh, oh, incidentally, Strider had to qualify again, but did, so that's that's nice, isn't it? Pybot qualified Aero BB. He's gone for the three block Saurus, fantastic. He's elected to go for the third reroll. I think the third reroll is a bit better if you're trying to win in normal time. I think with these potentially going to overtime in the not in the knockout stages, I would have, you know, I would have slightly preferred the two reroll build. But there's not a lot in it, and, and you know, either either way can can happen. So, and and also, you know, you might, you know, the winner of this might never go to overtime as well, right? It's a possibility. But uh, yeah, Pybot, pretty good coach. And then we've got Misspelled Tree, of course, one of the official casting team, uh, with a very similar team to Striders, except we've gone, well, the, the roster's the same, right? Except we've gone with a Frenzy Dancer over a sidestep, and rather than a couple of, well, a dodge and a wrestle has been given up for a guard catcher. Guard catcher's very interesting. I, I, I really don't like secondaries, honestly. I, I don't like giving up two normals for a secondary um, unless it's guard and in this I feel like you know wood elves get so much from like a dodge and a wrestle that um, I think I would have gone for that and also like you really want to protect this catcher now right so it's a very much all eggs in one basket on this catcher it's a, it's a it guard is I mean guard is more than nice isn't it it's, guard is beautiful it's uh, it's actually <laughs> I do know all about the frenzy dancer yeah I wasn't such a fan of the Frenzy Dancer, um, because I felt, you know, it's better versus bad players, which is good for, like, you know, a NAF tournament where, you know, <laughs> your first three or four rounds are likely to be kind of, you know, not too challenging and you get a lot of use out of the Frenzy. But versus top, top, top players, they'll never let you surf players for free on the first two turns. <laughs> Don't watch the Super League game of me versus Tree. Uh, <laughs> the most... The most embarrassing moment of my life. So, you know, it's... Um, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Strider also managed to put his ball carrier in the in the, on, the only position that he could get served. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> you know, so there you go. So two great players, you know, made mistakes and, and got punished by the Frenzy Dancers. So it, there's certainly... It's certainly better than I gave it credit for because, yeah, people can, people can always play badly, right? No matter who they are. Um, Jay Leave here, uh, rounding out the group, right? Um, he was on Team America for Euro Bowl. Um, sadly, Sol didn't qualify, despite being, you know, a very good player in Super League. He didn't really try to qualify. Jay Leave managed to find the uh, a route in, so uh, you know, well played for Jay Leave. He's he's got himself in. He's got a block ogre. He's got a tackle blitzer, block thrower, block catcher. Mighty Blow Slayer, three guards, Wrestle, and two halflings. That letting him at three rerolls. And an Apo. It's not bad, is it? He's got like 11 players and two half players. He's got to throw a teammate chance. The only three guard is very light versus the Bash teams. That's, that's what's wrong with this Old World Alliance build, I'd say. Uh, pretty, somewhat weak against the Bash teams. But interestingly, there are two Wood Elf teams in his group, right? Um, so, you know, they're, they're, they're allegedly the good matchup for Old World Alliance. The problem with Old World Alliance is, you know, look, he's got a lot more TV, 85 more TV. But Old World Alliance are a bad Blood Bowl team. Um, so, so, yes, they've got a great package, incredible package. But is it enough to make up for just the raw power of, like, Wood Elves and Lizard Men? Um, we shall see. But yeah, I, 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 would, I would back Strider and Tree to get out of that group, to be honest. Uh, lizard men have a, a bad racial matchup versus Wood Elves. I think it's closer if the lizard man coach is good. Um, I think maybe, you know, the average level, it's more, it's more in favour of Wood Elves. But I think, you know, if, if, the, if the lizard man is like, you know, a high level coach, then there's much less of a gap. Um, yep, I, I'm sure he does, Tree. I'm sure he does. But I'm still... I'm still backing Strider and Tree, and you know, it doesn't mean that they're definitely going to win, does it? Unfortunately, I've got turned around. I hope that was Group E. <laughs> Let's go to Group F. I'm sure you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's yeah, it's definitely a tough group. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying these are definitely going to win at all. Um, well, my favourite for this group is obvious. It is Olivia Dulac. 
What isn't obvious is, surprise, it's not rats. Olivier de Lac, incredibly not going with his favoured um, tabletop race. He's been number one in NAF for a long time with Skaven, and he's taken a jump up tree. He hasn't gone a guard catcher, he's gone a jump up tree. That is wild. Two sidestep catchers, a frenzy dancer, a wrestle lineman. This is a strange build. Only two rerolls, no leader thrower. Wow, this I, this is an absolute surprise. <laughs> I, was, I was not expecting this. This is a wild roster from Olivier Dulac. Uh, yeah, strip frenzy, yeah. E every single wood elf will surely have strip. Um, the only variance is on the second dancer. Um, but yeah, this is this is wild. Uh, the jump up tree, the sidestep catches, all very strange picks. And uh, interesting to see how he does with them, you know. Very interesting to see how Olivier does with this. Um, very, very, very interesting to see how Olivier does with this team. But, you know, it's so dominant at tabletop, you've got to pick him, right? Actually, don't really know how good the other people are. Again, like a lot of these qualifiers, you know, just we can't know every player in the World Cup, can we? So all we can do is talk about the ones that we do know and, and for coaching and then everyone else just look at their teams. Oh, wow. Amazing, amazing team name. Well done, Teddy Tom. Uh, imaginative. We know that about him. <laughs> Three rerolls. 12 players, no Apo. Oh, he's got the thrower and four catchers. I quite liked only three catchers and uh, an Apo, but we've gone, we've gone all out here. Four dodge, a stripper, a wrestler, and a sure hands. Um, I am not liking this roster i would not have picked pro elves i would have not picked this roster i would have not picked these skills so um you know it could be a great player but i am not i am not feeling that personally um and i would have named the players as well yeah now i've got shirts he of course beat andy david in the crendo invitational i know that uh, well, it's not an invitational, Crendo qualifying tournament. It was, there was nothing invitational about it. Um, right, so he's taken the standard roster, three rerolls. He's taken two guard mummies, does help versus the bash, couple of block, wrestle, ghouls, and a tackle white. So pretty standard, pretty standard. You know, there's always going to be a bit of variation in undead teams when it comes to block, amount of block and wrestle on the ghouls. There's usually a tackle white. And then there's an X amount of guard between the mummies and the whites. So um, yeah, this is this is pretty standard, pretty standard. So that's encouraging. Um, I think I might have played this in the NAF ladder uh, practice. And then we've got Zahu. A uh, he's a he's a chalice staple, right? He played a lot in chalice. He's gone for Skaven. He's got a tackler and a guarder, juggernaut, rat ogre, of course. Sidestep for the one turn. A strip baller, a blocker leader thrower to give him three total so he's gone for the 13 players and only two plus one um a rookie yeah so yeah this is an interesting build you know this is basically the same as euro ball rats minus one skill right it's basically the same as the euro ball build um minus a skill so so it's not it's not bad at all but noticeably olivia dulac did not do well in super league when he only had seven skills, then when he had eight skills, he got to the final. So that extra skill does make a big difference. He is losing wrestle off the gutter runner here compared to Olivier Delac's build, and uh, you know that 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 isn't nothing. Uh, but you know they're still scared and they can still score the one turn. They can still you know if you roll some bad dice, they can take advantage. But um, I mean, gotta pick Olivier for Group F. Now, group G. We've got these three players. I think Nuru. Let, let's go with let's go with Nuru here. Nuru, I remember him from the World Cup. I remember from playoffs a few times. And uh, oh, he's gone three guards, tackle, block, wrestle. So I mean, that is one of the standard builds for Necro. You know, the thirteen players. Nearly everyone will take this. Full positionals, thirteen players, three rerolls, and that looks that looks a pretty interesting. Um, Undead roster, Hello Breaky T, the legend Breaky T, fantastic resources to help everybody throughout the World Cup. 
Um, so yeah, completely standard undead team from Nuru. Now we've got Rio Bravo with Dark Elves. Oh wow, I love this. I love his profile thing here, this spinning axe. That's great, isn't it? Um, he's got Dark Elves. He hasn't got Dodge on the Blitzer. He's got a Leader Runner instead to give him three rerolls with an Apo. This is one of the standard builds that you can make, isn't it? It's all right. He actually hasn't spent the last 20k. He, he could have had um, two cheerleaders or assistant coaches. I mean, two assistant coaches. He just literally didn't spend that. So he could have had these two coaches. If he loses to a, a coaching... If he loses to an assistant coaching role, if he doesn't get the re-roll, he'll be very sad that he didn't spend he didn't spend everything when he created his team. So that was a mistake, definitely. This is, uh, I mean, this is somewhat standard, right? The other option is to have um, a a assassin, like uh, Sea Brawls went with an assassin. Uh, no, they didn't spend anything on fans. Everybody has one fan as standard on Sinai. They don't have the uh, zero fans. Um, you know, so if you're playing tabletop and you make a resurrection, um, what I can't remember what it's called, exhibition team, you start with zero dedicated fans. Um, everybody in Blood Bowl three starts with one dedicated fan. Um, so he just hasn't spent his last twenty TV. So he, he could have had two assistant coaches, but did not. Um, does that point to an experience in the format? Maybe. Here's Div SP. Um, he was in the playoffs, I think, or something. I, I know the name, so, you know, he, he might be a factor here. With, what's he, he's got a Juggernaut Roger. He's got a Guard Blitzer, a Tackle Blitzer. And he hasn't skilled the thrower. So that he's only got two re-rolls and 13 players. And then he's got the Block, the Strip, the Wrestle, and the Sidestep. So this is Olivier Dulac's roster minus Leader on the Thrower. So this is the thing, you've got to give up something right for the Skaven. And, uh, it's, but they're still Skaven. They're still Skaven, so things can, things can still happen for them. But two rerolls is actually very light. I would not have given up the... If I was giving up the leader, I would have definitely gone for 12 players. And, or given up the Apo. I think going to two... I think two rerolls is too few. But, you know, you know who knows? Um, I'm not... I'm not always right, but uh, I'm just, I can only say what I feel, and I feel that's maybe not the build, but I can still certainly win the tournament, you know, anything can. Right, Undead here for Mata Balitos. Ooh, we've got a strip ball gutter. Oh, very unstandard. Two tacklers, two guards, two skeletons. He's got all four ghouls, and uh, only one block. No wrestle, but a strip ball. So yeah, this is a very unusual, very unusual undead build. And uh, I mean, the, the roster's the same, apart from skeletons instead of zombies. Not what I would have done, but we'll see how it goes. All right, that's group G done. Okay, seven groups done. I'm doing about five minutes a group. That's not too bad. <laughs> right, group H. Um, I don't know. I mean, they, he, he submitted the roster and it was accepted, so I, maybe it's too late now. Jingo Berry chap. Uh, it's not for me to say, oh, this is a bit of a group of death. This one is a bit interesting, this group. Uh, the favourite is, of course, Andy Devo, official caster on the team here. And uh, he's gone exactly what I thought he would have gone. I could have bet money on him taking this roster, actually. Um, they They do... You, you, there's, there are two builds you can take. You could go both ghouls and only 11 players, or you go one ghoul and 12 players. And I think most people would go 12 players and one ghoul, you know, for seven positionals. All your positionals get a skill, and those skills are four guard and three block. Um, the problem is, it is a little bit, it's a little bit brittle, right? You've only got three players that can reliably handle the ball. Um, and you lose any of these players, and it's really bad. You know, it's... When we played in Super League with the Euro Bowl rules, they had they had the fourth ghoul. And even though it's just a rookie ghoul, it makes a big difference having that extra option there. And now that option doesn't exist. So even if you don't lose that ghoul in the game, uh, you know, even if you like the fact it just doesn't exist as a possible outlet, even if it wasn't one you were going to use, it changes how your opponents play. It's easier to play against this team because there are less ball threats. 
So it's interesting. It's it's still strong, just not as strong as... I mean, it was very strong in Euroball. Like Andy won once, got the final the other season, went 5-0 and one season and 4-1 and the other season. So, you know, he's had incredible results in Super League with nearly this roster. Uh, didn't do so well in Euroball, bizarrely. He had a very bad Euroball by his standards. But, um, yeah, I think he's definitely one of the favourites to win this tournament for sure. Um but interesting in his group, it's going to be Breaky T and Le Marseillais. I I don't fancy Baylor's chances, but Breaky T has gone for the standard six block Saurus Lizardman team. He's gone for the Chameleon Skink instead of the third reroll, which I think is completely reasonable. Not a lot to say about this. Bog standard Lizards, very strong. Very, very. I mean, Lizards are incredible. I, I genuinely, I think 90% of people should have taken Lizards for this tournament. Um... Baylor, though, has not. He's taken chaos. And uh, I, I cannot condone this this choice. I feel like they just didn't get enough, right? Like, it, chaos are a hard one because you've got to, like, give stuff like chaos and Nurgle a lot of skills to make them competitive. Otherwise, they're just catching up to, like, orcs and stuff and they, they don't even catch up to them. It's just, like, orcs just look to ruin this team, I would say. But, you know... Never, who knows? He could be a he could be a chaos specialist. He could be great. Uh, Liam, if people know Liam from like tabletop and fumble, he he like won NAF champs or something. I think or did the best at UK UKTC. Yeah, he did the best at UKTC with um, with chaos in the individual rankings. So you know, so people can do it. It's beyond me how they do, but um, you know, maybe he will. He's he's got three block, two guard. Tackle, wrestle, two heads. He's got a block, mighty blow guy to blitz with every turn. Um, three re-rolls. It just doesn't look good. I, I think it's going to be very hard for him. Um, particularly, he's got Devo in there. But also Le Marcelet, right? Le Marcelet, we know from lots of chalices and stuff. Very accomplished player. He's gone for Woodies here. Again, we've gone for more the uh, core team with only uh, no, no tree man. But he's got actually 12 players, which is interesting. No Apo. Two rerolls plus the leader. So it's not actually much like the core team. <laughs> but he's got lots of dodge. It's, he's got eight dodge. And uh, he's got tackle. Tackle straight as the standard Wood Elf choice, dan dancer choices of all time. Four catches. Two dodge, two wrestle. That's also pretty standard. So yeah, so I guess compared to core, he, he's got this thrower with leader instead of a line, instead of a catcher and a reroll, right? A catch an apothecary and a reroll. Oh my god, I sorry, I can't speak. This is difficult. It could have been a dodge lineman. You could have given this lineman dodge, and then this thrower could have been an apothecary and a reroll. But um you know, that the, he's got twelve players. The the thing with Wood Elves is I feel like, you know, they want to apothecary a war dancer if the war dancer gets hurt. But the apothecary is worse these days, isn't it? Thirty seven and a half percent instead of fifty percent on most injuries. So you know, maybe 12 players is good. The problem is, you know, relying on the leader, that, that guy can get injured, and then you've only got two re-rolls, and you're in a bit of a pickle. But, uh, yeah, it, that should be really interesting to see, you know, which two qualify out of that. But, yeah, obviously have to pick. Have to pick Dave for Group H. Okay, Group I... Okay, so um, Undead, Orcs and Skaven in this. Sergal is the standout player that I know. Very good at Blood Balls. Oh, interesting build. Four block biggins, no guard at all. And he's got block on the thrower. He's sick, five of his six skills are block. And a mighty blow blitzer. So I'm not a fan of this build at all. I think you need some guard. He hasn't got the troll. 12 players, Apo, and 3 rerolls, but no troll, no guard. I, you know, if he gets lizards or something like this, he's going to really struggle, or other orcs, so yeah. Okay, not a fan of the build. Not a fan of the build at all. Maybe inexperienced in tabletop style. Let's have a look at Zapatsky on Undead. Ooh, he's taken a block mummy. Oh wow, he's given up. He's given up the uh, the sec like two norm. So there was an option like you know most of the tier one teams had six um, 
primary skills, but there was an option for four primary and one secondary. I don't really think that's worth taking on many teams. Uh, but I guess a block mummy, you know, it's very cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, not what I would have done. Guard and tackle whites, sure hands and block ghouls. It's still the usual roster, three reels, 13 players. Um, nearly every undead team was built that way for the roster, but lots of variations in skills with undead, which is nice. Spitfire here with orcs. He's gone for guard biggins. He's got the troll. He's actually got the goblin as the 12th player. Okay, that's pretty nice. It means he's wasted 40 T, uh, no, 30 TV, sorry. Two assistant coaches and dedicated fan. That is a bit of a problem. Um, but yeah, he's actually got the one turn chance. We've got a goblin, you know, around. And uh, we've got a mighty blow and a tackle. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is an interesting, interesting roster. Wait, this is 1255. Didn't he get another one as well? Couldn't he have had another coach? I feel like he could have had another coach. Um, or, or, you know, cheerleader or fan. But, uh, yeah, a lot more guard and a troll. is. The troll is interesting. It's good versus the bash matchups, um, but it's a bit rubbish versus the agility matchups. So I'm, I'm leaning away from troll, honestly. Oh, the fans don't count to watch your TV. Yes, thanks. I'm an idiot. Thank you. Thank you, Jürgen. I was an idiot. Errata, errata. Um, so now we have surveillance with rats. Three rerolls plus leader, 12 players, apple. And we are missing wrestle on a gutter to have nearly the Olivia Dulac build. Um, we've got a guard and mighty blow blitzer. I, I, that's, I, I said other people that nearly had the Olivia Dulac build. A lot of them had tackle. Olivia goes a mighty blow on a guard. Uh, but yeah, very close. He's, he's lost Wrestle off the gutter. That seems a common one that people are losing. And um, sidestep for the one turn is great, isn't it? With Juggernaut, Roger. So yeah, maybe Surveillance will actually do well out of this because I'm I'm not a g huge fan of Circle's team build. Um, so yeah, who who knows about that one? That's Group I. Right, Group J. <sighs> We're getting there. <laughs> Right, this this looks a pretty brutal group actually, and uh, I'm picking somebody that I know nothing about, which is Wenteros, because he was Rube BBL champions, and if you're champion of Rube BBL, then you've got to be pretty flipping good. The uh, Russians are really good at blood ball in general. Loads of good players, so for him to have topped that, he's got to be he's got to be good. It's just got to be. Um, He's actually gone for the exact same team as me. No, he hasn't. Um, so he's taken assistant coaches rather than a reserve. Um, so yeah. So I took an assistant coach and a 12th player. He's taken the apothecary and three assistant coaches. I was. I really wasn't sure about the apothecary. The reason behind the reason I took the 12th player rather than the apothecary was thinking that games might go to overtime and stuff. Um, I think, you know, in a 16, it's, it's right. Sometimes the reserves better. Sometimes the apple is better. It's six and two threes. The fact that you've got six really good players that you want to apple does help, right? Keeping one of those in that was going to be KO'd early, keeping them in is really good. If one of them gets badly hurt and you get them back, that's really great. So like, there's a lot to be said for the apple. It's really, really tough to call. The, the interesting thing is not really getting anything good for the apple, right? Like if you could get something, if that 30K on the assistant coaches, if that could be a team mascot, I would have, I would have done that 100%. But I, I didn't feel the assistant coaches were that impactful enough um, that it didn't make my mind up for me. Um, whereas I feel like a team mascot would make it. Um, oh, and he's actually got double wrestle, which is well, interesting. Interesting, so yeah. So I like his team, and uh, he must be good at Blood Bowl. But the other three I all know are pretty good, right? So we've it's, uh, Chalice Regular, Chalice Regular, and uh, Rebel and Naf Cup he's done well in. So th these these are, we know for sure these three are all pretty good. But Spartacus here with, oh dear. <laughs> Not, not what I, not what I would do here, Spartacus. He's got three block lizards. Oh dear, oh dear. A tackle and two guards, and uh, only two rerolls. Three block Saurus and two rerolls. I hate this build. It's still going to be strong, obviously, because it's a lizards. But um, 
absolutely not how I would build them at all. But you know, maybe he's a lizard man expert, a master, if you will. But um, woof. Coke guy here with undead. He's put a guard on a mummy, guard and tackle on the whites, a couple of block and a wrestle. So nearly Dimmy's preferred build. Dimmy would swap this guard for a block ghoul. 13 players, 3 rerolls. He does have the 13th man as a skeleton. I do this sometimes, right? Because I feel like if the game's ever going bad enough that you need to field this 13th player, then maybe you do need the speed of him, right? Because, like, you know, someone's banged you out, you've got really unlucky. If you have to fill, if you have to fill the 13th, maybe you're down to 10 players, right? So, um, because because the fact that for you to have already lost two, you're facing, like, you know, say, um, I don't know, like a seven mighty blow build or a, like a double dirty player build or something like this or a stack sneaky get dirty player so if you've lost two there's a chance you lose more so then the more the less players you have the more value movement is so i've done this before i, I don't hate the 13th man being a skeleton um having said that i probably wouldn't take the skeleton as the 13th man but i don't hate it at all <laughs> so there you go there's coke guys undead and then Mad Jake, he was he used to play Proils a lot in Blood Bowl 2, but he's been playing Orcs constantly in Blood Bowl 3. And uh, we've got four guard, we've got a block, we've got a tackle. Um, it's okay, isn't it? It's okay. I, I th the usual build, I, I, it, it, it's hard to say what the usual build is for Orcs. I guess you often see like two guard, two block, a mighty blow and a tackle, something like that. I don't really like a mighty blow and a tackle. I'd rather just have a mighty blow, honestly. But um, different tabletop's slightly different, of course, because you have like Amazons, which really, really, really make you want to take a tackle on a team. Um, but Mighty Blow has got like the same chance of removing as tackle does. So like at the end of the day, knocking over a player isn't that impactful, right? But removing them is. So you might as well just have Mighty Blow and remove the players. You know, I want I want to kill a dancer. I don't want to knock it over and not kill it. So. I, I'm, I'm not such a big a fan of Tackle, honestly, in that style. He's got 13 players rather than 12 and an Apo, which I think, I guess that really lets him foul a lot more. That's interesting. And three rerolls. So there you go, there's Mad Jake's build. Um, so based on the builds, and I, 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 not that I know Winteross is a great player, but he has to be. He has to be to have won Rue BBL. So I'm I'm backing him for Group J. Right, group K. Group K? Group K. <laughs> ah. So I've been told that Serafino is a good table topper. So let's go. Let's go with Serafino as the favourite here. Also has Wood Elves versus three Bash teams, but that can that I mean that that's not necessarily good for Wood Elves, right? But playing Bash teams, you can get banged out. But it's it's six and two threes. It's really odd, really odd whether that's good or not for them. Um, he's taken a tree with grab and a and a sprint catcher. So he's taken two skills to help with a one turn, which is a lot. And I guess frenzy helps with one turn as well. Strip ball throw with leader and a couple of wrestle linos so very little dodge only four dodge on the team um two re-rolls plus the leader of course apple so yeah i'm not i'm not a huge fan of this build but you know it's, it's okay it's not it's, it's not crazy or anything but just not not a huge fan i uh, don't really know any of the coaches here i think rock's been in in playoffs before uh, like chalice but um Aresius. So we've got the block, biggins, the guard, biggins, and the tackle, and the mighty blow. So this is exactly what I said was <laughs> standard for Orcs, and he's, he's taken those skills. But what he's taken a little bit unstandard is the troll and the goblin, and uh, no apple, three rerolls. So this is this is pretty cool. He's got a bit of everything, right? He's got the uh, he's got the troll and the goblin for the one turn. He's got the thrower. He's only got one lineman. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. Twenty k unspent. I don't. I don't hate this team at all. Actually, yeah, interesting. I say interesting a lot. I know, but it's. Uh, it is interesting. What can I say? <laughs> P D Poos with undead. We've finally gone a more Dimmy G compliant team. No skills on the mummies. 
guard on both the whites, no tackle though, and then a couple of blocks, sure hands, and a wrestle. So all the skills on the ghouls and the whites on the agility three players, nor on the mummies who, you know, they're already 125k, they just want to stuck it, get stuck in and fight things, right? You don't want to, you don't want to be relying on their guard working. The problem is the guard is on the is actually quite good in bash mirrors and in his group are two orcs so he might struggle a little bit due to that and here's rock with orcs he's got the troll 12 players apo two rerolls plus the leader lots of people taking this leader here three guard uh, and uh, a rookie a rookie blocker mighty blown tackle as is standard um so yeah this is it's a pretty standard orc team. Uh, they're all they've all got subtle differences. I like that all the all the orc teams, you know, although like they've they've got a lot of subtle differences because the money doesn't work out quite right for them like it does for certain other teams. But I, I guess I'm still picking Serafino for this group K. Okay. Um We're about to get, I think, to the to the standout roster actually ought to join. Hello. Um, <laughs> group L is is this the one? No, no, maybe the next one. Trust me, there, there's something amazing coming. This is a funny group. We've got one Skaven with three Lizardmen. So there's definitely going to be a Lizardman qualifier out of this group. The top two. Should have said that earlier, shouldn't I? The top two from each group qualify. Um, I'm going to go with Ben Bo Baggins. A lot of people like Ben Bo Baggins. I don't know how good he is at Blood Bowl, but I've heard him mention a lot. He did finish second on the ladder, I think, so, you know, that's that's pretty good, isn't it? He's got six block Saurus. He's got a Chameleon Skink for the third for the third row. so he's taken the roster I'd take. Um, so, yeah, good. Good Lizardman roster there. Um, Foo Folle with exactly the same roster. Fantastic. <laughs> I've been going in order, but let's, let's look at the third um, Lizards first. It is Drago. Oh, he has not gone exactly the same. He's taken a guard Saurus. But he has also gone. So all three of them took the Chameleon Skink over the third reroll. But he let the side down by taking guard instead of six block. But that's hilarious. If we'd had three lizard men that were all exactly the same roster, that would have been really funny. And then here's Nabolo. It's an imp it's a it's a <laughs> it's it's an it's a matchup, the Skaven. Yeah, anything can happen, right? They they get bullied by the Saurus, but then their, their gutters can deal with the Skinks quite well. Um, he's gone three re-rolls, no apple, 13 players. He's lost leader from the thrower, but he's got block, wrestle, strip, sidestep on the gutters. He's got mighty blow guard on the blitzers, and he's got jugger on the roger. So this is the ODL build minus um, leader on the thrower. Yep, and then... I think actually Olivia Dilac only has two rerolls, right, and an apple. So he's 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 swapped. He swapped the apple for the reroll to make up for losing the leader on the thrower. So I actually quite like this build for Nabolo. But um I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Benbo Baggins there with the lizards. For group L. Right, group M. Is this the group? Is this the group? Yes! <laughs> well, my favourite to win this is, of course, Diomed. Um, World of Ruby BL. Diomed is maybe the best player in Blood Bowl 3 at this moment in time. He's actually gone for a non-standard build, or he's only gone one wolf. And he did play this build in Super League, even though... Um, he was, you know, it, we used Euroball rules. He was able to build a completely optimal two wolf roster. He chose to make this build in preparation for the World Cup because I guess, you know, he, he felt we, that we wouldn't get the resources. Well, Necromantic wouldn't get the resources that they did in, in Euroball. So to prepare, he built this with two ghouls, one wolf. And I should have called it Two Ghouls, One Wolf, shouldn't he? That would have been a great, a great team name, Two Ghouls, One Wolf. Um, but he's got the world of Ruby BL, which is fine. And four guards, a Wrestle Ghoul and a Block Ghoul, Block Wolf, 13 players. So it's a bit more solid, right? It's a bit more solid than the, the usual 12-man build. Uh, it's still kind of brittle and it's only got three ball handlers. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, it's not... It's not 
it's not like just worse than two wolves, right? Because you can only blitz with one wolf at a time anyway, usually. And often you can only block with one at a time, never mind blitz, because, you know, people will set up frenzy traps and stuff, guard lock you, things like this. So it's, it's often the second wolf is superfluous, which is why I went wrestle on the second wolf, because then I thought, well, I can use, you know, the block one primarily and then the wrestle if, if it, situation dictates. So Diamond's just purely gone with a one wolf. That lets him get two ghouls. You know, ghouls are blodge, they're great players. Uh, Blodge or Rodge, and it gives him a 13th player for more reliability against getting removed with potential of overtime. So I actually quite like his roster, even though it is it is an atypical roster. Four guard on the fleshies and rates is totally standard. Um, so yes, I'm definitely backing Diamed to get out of this group. But speaking of great teams, Mr. Page is going to be the fan favourite, I think, of everybody. Um, everybody in the tournament. I'm loving this. <laughs> He's taken... Black Ox, and he's got six Mighty Blow on the Black Ox. <laughs> he's got Block on the Troll, and he's got Sneaky Git on a Goblin. Absolutely incredible. Four rerolls, Apple, and he's just going to smash everything. <laughs> it's hilarious. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I'm in love with his team. I'm very glad that I'm not having to play it, because, you know, he can just roll some dice and you've got no chance. Um, but, you know, he's going to have to roll some dice. Yeah, that's the thing, Yudi. Um, it, it it doesn't work out well for them, the, the money. Um, they really struggle with the money with this build, for sure. Um, to the point where... You know, you know Euro Bowl. Um, Black Oaks got twelve ninety in Euro Bowl, and I actually used the package to give up a skill to get ten more TV for Euro Bowl because uh, because it, that got you the the fourteenth player. It's actually really hard to to get extra player. I mean, he could have dropped a reroll for for the thirteenth man, but then he, you know he, he then he's got wasted points in like coaches and stuff. So I, I get why he's uh, why he's not wanted to waste it, but yeah. it's... Yeah, I think he probably should have had 13 players. But yeah, it's a great team, isn't it? It's a hilarious team. He's up against it, though, because, you know, obviously Diamed's great. He's got 13 players, lots of which have regen. And then the other two teams are Dark Elves, which are, you know... They're one of those teams where you can dice them, right? His, his primary strategy of just removal is going to be good versus Dark Elves if he removes them. But uh, if he doesn't, he's just going to lose to them. <laughs> so here's Castor. He has gone for the Seabros build here. Um, which, you know, Seabros won Super League with this build. We've gone for one Assassin with stick dodge on it to make him survivable. A block and a Wrestle Witch. Three dodge on Blitzers, but still got the fourth. Two rerolls. One one coach apo 5k left over really good really good build i really actually really like this build the the assassin is actually great versus like wood elves and stuff right stabbing war dancers you can stab gutter runners sometimes you can stab other dark elves it's actually it's actually pretty good honestly a dodge assassin is pretty good in this format i don't like assassins in in progression ever but i think in this kind of format i think there's a lot to be said for dodge assassins and you know cage dives against ghouls things like that right you know you can it's just pretty good like really actually pretty good i really do like this so uh yeah fair play to caster and then we've got jonesy with dark elves as well oh wow okay so yeah i've seen this build before because he was practicing with it in naf ladder but I really don't like this tackle on the Blitzer instead of block on the Witch Elf. Um, or Wrestle, but you know, I would have definitely put my skills. I really hate a Witch Elf without skills. Um, but you know, he's got this extra tackle, which might be useful. And he's got a leader on the runner for the third reroll. Uh, but yeah, I actually do like, I just really like the, I like the Assassin more. What can I say? A couple of coaches. Um, so yeah, but it's not bad, you know, and he's, uh, he's pretty good at Blood Bowl, but... Uh, yeah, Diamed's my pick, 100% to qualify. Mr. Page is my pick for being the most entertaining games and best team build and the most fun. Definitely, definitely the most fun is going to be the Mr. Page games. Uh, so that's Group M. All right, we're nearly finished. Fantastic. Group N. Oh, interesting, interesting. Let's go, let's go Call Troop here. I mean, no, it's bright, it's bright. <laughs> it's definitely bright. He's got Necromantic, and 
He's really good at Blood Bowl. And he's gone for the Diomed build. I think, honestly, I think the Russians might have been, uh, you know, discussing this. Because the, they've both taken the exact same build. And, you know, Bright's also Russian. They're really, also really good at Blood Bowl. Um, yeah, this is, this is interesting. I think that's a really good build. Really good player. I think he's the favourite for this group. Um, Ivan Colin with Orcs. Four guard biggins, mighty blow, tackle, thrower, 12 players, apple, three reels, pretty standard orcs. And sip gin with also pretty standard orcs, right? <laughs> tackle, tackle, mighty two guard, two block. He's gone for the troll. Okay, not that typical. He's gone for the troll. He's gone for three goblins. So this was to not waste the points, right? If, if normally if you go with a goblin here, you've got 80k left, so you go like a lineman and three coaches or whatever. So he's he's dropped that and gone for two more goblins. So three goblins is uh, it's a lot of goblins. I'm not a big fan of this build. I, I'm going to throw it out there. Goblins not good at blood ball. Um, but you know, fair enough. And then Cold Troop, of course, Cold Troop had the legendary story of his his humans overcoming all odds at the season two finals, finished third place. Um, so I wanted to pick him for the story, but I I mean I can't pick him for Bright, and especially when there's two orcs, and orcs are such a horrible matchup for humans. Um, but he's got a guard ogre, a couple of guard blitzers, mighty blow, tackle, block, block. 14 players, only three rerolls. Actually, I think I do prefer 13 players and four rerolls. But I get with, you know, going overtime, you want loads of players. Potentially going overtime in the later stages. I think it's it's fine having 14 players. It means he can foul more as well, right? If he was in with Wood Elves or something. So, um, yeah, don't, don't hate his build at all. Pretty solid build. And he did have that great... I mean, I've got to keep picking against him, right? He was the underdog. He was the underdog hero from Season 2 final. So, again, I, I just can't pick him as the favourite. He's got to be the underdog again. But I, I wouldn't... I, would, I could see him qualifying from this group. But, yeah, have to have to back Bright the most. All right, Group O. Um, Andre is my pick here, despite... <laughs> <laughs> having nobility we've got three nobility one dark elf so one nobility team will qualify it's pretty funny that there were five nobility teams taken three were in one group and two were in another so all of the all of the knobs are concentrated um admin dices are not we'll find out he got a good draw for nobility because he's got mirrors where they're not the worst team and i he's taken he's taking my preferred build so there you go Fair play to Andre. Um, five guard. Normals on here. Doubles on the thrower for guard. Leader on the other one. And two dodge blitzers. So this is absolutely the build I would have taken for Imperial Nobility. Three re-rolls. 13 players. Actually, it's actually quite good. It is actually quite good. Um, the problem being that you're still Nobility, right? Like, the package is great. You get a lot of TV. You get, you get six guard, which is amazing. You get two blodges, which is great. Like, there's a lot going for this. The problem is you're still in pure nobility with all everything that implies. But um, honestly, pretty great build. This is my favorite knob build, and uh, it's the one that I would pick if I picked them. So, yeah, fair play. Happy picking Andre there. And he's very good at Blood Bowl. Um, so, yep. Fez has taken a block ogre. That's what Dim Dimmy prefers, the block ogre. And then he's taken two dodge blitzers, and then he's just taken a block thrower. So yeah, so so he's moved the he's moved the double to there, but it means he's down two guard, right? This is why I, I don't like the ogre, the block ogre, because you, you it costs you two guard, right? You swap two guard for two block. Um but it's still it's still strong. It's still strong. Still totally fine. Uh, well, it, the thing is, somewhat better than others. When I say good player, I mean top player. I, excuse me. Um, yes, uh, of course. Everyone presumably is a good player. Some qualified through... So a lot qualified through private leagues. Now, some of those are easier to qualify than others. Um, but they're all... I'm sure they're all good, yes. But some are definitely better than others. Some are top, 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 top players. 
and uh, Andre is definitely a top player um, for sure. Right, Gorgo Bay here has gone with Dark Elves, another imaginatively titled team. Oh, he's only got the one Witch Elf. Oh, so this is this is actually um, Christopher Bengston's build. I mean, it's also Gorgo Bay's build, but I actually quite like this. I actually quite like this build. I tried this build out. You get three. So rather than having like a a Blitzer or a Witch Elf that you don't skill, you just drop them and get a third reroll, and then you skill the Assassin. I really actually really like the Dodge Assassin. So you get the Dodge Assassin, you get five Blodgers or Rogers in, in the Witch Elf case, and that, and that means you get three rerolls in the Apo. So yeah, I really, really, really like this um, build. I like it more than my build, honestly. I like this. The problem is it's a little less solid. Um, you know, like he's, he's missing a Blodger, so it's a bit less defensive than mine. And uh, he's got the Apo, which... It's more variable, right? Like sometimes it fails and stuff. Sometimes you get a great opportunity to use the Apo. Sometimes you don't. Whereas a reserve is always a reserve, lets you foul and stuff, which you can't with eleven players. So there, there's some. There are there are pros and cons to this, but I actually overall I really like this build. So um, fair play to that. Um, I'm not sure everyone will be in the top hundred. No. Um, right, and here's Spinky with an ability. And, uh, okay, so he's gone for the Block Ogre, four guards, leader, thrower. He's not, so he's gone for a dirty player as Estra Skill rather than a block on the thrower. And he's taken tackle on a blitzer. I, I really do prefer the double dodge blitzers. Um, but I, I understand people liking tackle, it's just not for me. But people are going for this build as the an ability build, right? These are the, always the players, the two throwers, two blitzers, Ogre, bodyguards. Most people are picking this for an ability team. They're pretty much all taking the leader, and they're pretty much all taking the four guard. And then there's there's a bit of variation on whether to put the double on the ogre or get an ox. It's just like it's basically two guard. Like I really don't like only having four guard when you can have six guard. That's my main problem with the the non six guard rosters. So, uh, but you know, bl block ogre. At the end of the day, if you take an ability, you probably get lucky. You probably got to get lucky to win. And a block ogre is a way to get lucky and win. So I, I don't hate the block ogre, but you know, four guard instead of six, I, I would go six guard every time. So yeah, definitely picking Andre for that group. But uh, go go bear. Yeah, he's got he's got my favoured. He's got my favoured dark elf build. That's group O. And group P, the final group. Well, hey. Who do we have? Uh, we've got Dion Lord as the favourite here. I think he's been a top-rated NAF player with Orcs for a long time. I don't know if he still is, but he was Italian, um, you know, national team member for tabletop. He's gone for the heavier bash bash side, right, with three guards. Both mummies guarded up. Mighty blow blitzer. Interesting. We've already got two mighty blows. He's gone for the third mighty blow rather than tackle. A block and then a sure hands rather than a wrestle. So interesting build. <laughs> Take a shot every time I say interesting, and you might you might be worse for wear. Uh, ooh, actually Niagara's Woody's in this group. That's that's something, isn't it? Right, Alan seventy six. He's also got undead. He's only got two ghouls and taking the fourth reroll. I hate that decision <laughs> ghouls are incredible players i absolutely hate not taking all four ghouls hate it hate it hate it um strip ball white guard white two guard mummies three skeletons oh oh i no i do not do not like do not like that at all from alan <laughs> there you go uh Mongoloom has oh he's dropped a reroll hmm i don't i don't mind this honestly so because he's dropped the reroll he swapped the guard flesh golems to block maybe maybe he's only needed one block right maybe he could have gone block and guard but um he swapped the the flesh golems from guard to block dropped the reroll 
and then you've gone you so that allows him to take the ghoul in addition to the 12 players so like you know he's it's 13 players totals a lot he's got all the positionals i don't like the show hands but i guess he's thought with the two rerolls like he's taken three skills to to make up for the lock, lack of rerolls but i still think he should definitely have block on the ghoul um and then guard on the wraith so yeah that's that's this is a pretty cool build honestly i, I didn't think of this build for necro um i think i do prefer you know andy's and diamed's build but it's 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 for sure not bad this build um I do think maybe he's blocked for the ghoul though, but yeah, it's good that he's got the four players right. He's got four players that can handle the ball. That is the big strength of this team. And uh, Niagara's here with Woodies. Niagara has been a Chalice regular in Blood Bowl Two, and he's got a mighty blow dancer. Flip me. This is this is rowdy. And a strip ball dancer, leader thrower. Lots of people took the leader thrower to get three rerolls. Couple of dodge and one wrestle. So he's given up the wrestle lino and, like, say, sized up in the dancer to make this into mighty blow. Um, I'm not the biggest fan about that, to be honest. I'm, but you know, woodies are still woodies, right? Like, a lot of it's going to come down to play. You know, there's only so much you can say from looking at the teams. And you know, <laughs> trying to judge things based on the team. Like I don't know a lot of the coaches, right? And yeah, I mean, I'm sure they'll all be good. I'm sure they'll all be good. And when I've been saying, you know, some are good and stuff, it's it's not like uh, it's not like the others aren't good. It's, you know, the ones that I'm saying I know what good means. I know they're really, really good. <laughs> so let me let me clarify that. I do apologise uh, for that earlier, but yeah. So it should be interesting. So there you go. And uh, yeah, you can find Breaky T's spreadsheet has got all the information on. I made a casting spreadsheet, which has all of the, you know, all of the official cast will be detailed on that. So I'll link those in the description. So there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.